What's up, YouTube? Maven here. Welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we have a really, really cool, uh, creative um, mono green convoke deck. Uh, typically in Pioneer, you see Boros convoke, but this is mono green convoke. It's one of the most creative decks I've seen in a minute. This is from uh, Eseda Junya. Junya. I S E D A J U N apostrophe Y A. Uh, who took it to a first place finish in our oh so favorite small Japanese tournament, Haruya tournament. So congrats to them on their first place finish. And uh, the deck is very creative besides there's one thing like I was, I was thinking like the mana base is weird, 24s. I was like, there could definitely be a Basaju in there, but they decided to actually put the Basaju in the sideboard. And then um, there could be like, you know, a layer of the Hydras and stuff like that. But I guess they wanted everything to be untapped and they didn't want to take any paint off things like Hashep Oasis. So, you know, it is what it is, but they first place tournament with it. So can't question it, right? Um, but yeah, I did feel like you wanted every land on top when I was testing this deck. Anyways, this deck has two payoffs, which is Galta and Ancient Imperiosaur. So Galta costs X less to cast, where X is the total power creatures you control. Since we're trying to convoke out a bunch of creatures, we can make this guy really cheap really fast. Ancient Imperiosaur, um, you can convoke by tapping creatures to pay for it. And when it enters the battlefield, it puts two 1-1 one -one counters on each creature, or it gets two 1-1 one -one counters for each creature that convoked it. So it's just going to be gigantic. It's got ward. And... Um, so yeah, we're just uh, trying to convoke it out. And we got a bunch of things that are like one mana. So C-Note Scout enters the battlefield, explores, right? And then we got this guy here, Rebel Belt uh, Maverick, one mana, one, one, enters the battlefield, surveils two. So these two guys are digging for us as one mana, one, ones to try to find our payoffs. And then we got Mana Dorks, Lana Elves, and Elvish Mystic. And then like uh, we can also get another one drop in Lovestruck Beast that can make a human token and then be another body later to help convoke. Uh, Burning Tree Emissary is also just free, free Convoke Fodder, makes mana upon entry. And then we're convoking out things like a Halo Hopper, convoke it up for, you can play that for free as a 3-2. And then Sprouting Renewal, we can convoke out to make a 2-2 with Vigilance. Um, and can also destroy Non-Factor and Shaman, so good tech there. So this whole suite of like one drops and like this and, and like these guys, very, very efficient early convoke package to help get out these guys. And I was very impressed at how it was running. And then we have two copies of Get a Leg Up. This can also just win the game in a pinch until in a turn, target creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control and gains reach. Um, I felt like this maybe should have been Aspect of the Hydra instead, but we'll see how Get a Leg Up goes because we're going to be convoking out a bunch of creatures and uh, this is going to be like one mana plus five plus five or something. So it could be good. So onto the sideboard here, we got Scavenging Ooze for the Graveyard. And then we have Tr Tranquil Frill back to deal with artifacts of enchantments and gain life, exile the graveyard, Tivar stand to prevent removal. And then the Besaju, like I said, is in the board. I feel like this could have easily been just in the main deck. I don't see why not. Damping Sphere to stop uh, Is It, and also the Lotus Field combo. And then Filigree Silex to blow up all zero drops, I guess, because we don't want to put it on one because we have a lot of one drops. So I don't know what that's really there for, but we'll see. So that is about it, and we're ready to get into the gameplay. But first, before we do, as usual, we'll give a quick shout out to our sponsors. This video is sponsored by TCGPlayer.com, the go-to marketplace for anything magic related from deck boxes, card sleeves, play mats, and more to any MPG singles in any version, language, or condition with a massive variety of sellers from all across the nation so you can make sure you always get the best prices to fit your needs. You can find them in the deck list link down below. Just click Shop TCG Player at the top to be redirected to the main site and anything you purchase through that deck list link will help support the channel. And this video is also sponsored by Mana Traders. You often wonder how us content creators are able to stream hundreds of decks on Magic Online over the years. Wouldn't it cost a fortune to buy all those cards? Well, the reason it's possible is because we use Mana Traders. This way you're able to rent all the cards you want on MTGO so you don't have to go broke buying them all. So if you're planning on playing Magic Online, it's definitely in your best interest to check out Mana Traders. There's a link in the description with the code for 10% off. And now let's resume the video. All right, we got a game here against fun is zero sum. And we are going to be on the play. So even if this deck's not like good, it's going to be fun. And that's the that's all that matters, right? It's a budget deck. It was only like 22, 22 ticks, $22. So very, very cheap. 
And I think we're going to go with... Let's just start on the Elvish Mystic. And you know what? I don't need a Heart's Desire. I might just straight up play this guy to just start aggroing. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. All right, Burning Shree into Elvish Mystic. And go. All right, let's Heart's Desire. And play Love Struck Beast. See if they can counter it. They're not. All right, attack for two. And they're going to draw a card with the face. I like that card. It's a very satisfying card. And it could be very useful for um, indomitable creativity. Draw a card and then make a token to sack to it. That's actually kind of crazy. And I haven't seen that done yet. All right. Um, Burning Tree Emissary into Rubble Belt Maverick. Surveil 2. Put that into the graveyard and that into the graveyard. C Note Scout. Reveals a C Note Scout. Put that in the graveyard. I was thinking maybe I should have kept Halo Hopper because a 3 2 at this point is not that bad since we're trying to go wide. But if a Languish hits me here, I'm instant scooping. I'm scooping so incredibly fast. Okay, they actually don't have double black. Nice. And they don't have anything to hit with this to get a swamp. That's hilarious. I guess that's the benefit of going mono forests. It kind of saved us. Never mind, it's Extinction Event. But what do they name? Probably evens or odds. They name evens. That's crazy. They just had extinction event because like language is the norm these days. People don't really use this too much anymore, but unfortunately they just happen to have that. Eightfield's not going to wreck us. I think because they have mono sleepers, I think uh, this is definitely a losing matchup. Mito Massacre, that's going to be a scoop. All right, so yeah, because they're like, they have multiple main deck sweepers and probably more on the board, I think this is automatically, like, I don't know why this happens in YouTube videos. We always get the worst matchup imaginable in game one. <laughs> but trust me, it gets better. So I urge you to stick around. If you don't like how the first game's going, feel free to skip to the next game. But yeah, it's going to be Mono Sweeper, so this is going to be rough. And I think we're just going to run it back because it looks like there's nothing. We're... Actually, we could have brought in Tivers last stand. All right. Um, I guess we'll keep this and we'll try to win with Get a Leg Up. But yeah, I'm very... Uh... I'm very uh, surprised with this deck. It's one of the most creative decks I've seen in a minute. This is what I like to see in Pioneer and Modern. Gonna kill it? Yep. Honor City Sewers. All right, C-Node Scout, try to look for a land drop. All right, we're going to put that in the graveyard. And next turn, when we get swept, I think I'm just going to scoop. All righty, Rebel Belt. All right, put that into the graveyard and put, you know, let's put both into the graveyard. Do I just go for the, go for the Galta here? 
If I give plus four plus four to something, be six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'll be one short. Unfortunate. <laughs> All right. Um, it's Halo Hopper. And I'm not going to get a leg up yet. Let's just attack here. Next turn, we can Galta for two mana. I think I'm just going to get a leg up on something now. On the Rubble Belt Maverick. They're probably going to kill it in response, right? All right, now we can play Galta for two mana. I guess I could have attacked first and then done that second main, but then if they killed it and I left up an elf, I would have gotten in for one less damage and gotten screwed. All right, they're going to chump something here. All right, here comes the sweeper, but we still got a Galta. If it's Meat Hook Massacre, they can survive. But if it's any other sweeper, we can live. If they name evens with Extinction Event, that's only hitting Galta. Everything else survives. Deduce. Oh, it's 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 not deface, it's deduce. I got it wrong. Alright, let's give it up. The Galta got there. Let's go. Oh, I can't believe it. There's a chance. Okay, Tivar's last stand. I think I want to bring in a couple of these instead of the get a leg ups. Because if we can protect our Galta, that'd be huge. All right, we'll keep this. This deck is... um has really fun starts. It just feels very consistently aggressive at the start. That's what I like about it. Line of Rails, go. Modern Horizons 3 is, is coming out and I really hope they don't print more, even more stuff that's just broken in modern. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. And I really hope they give us a noble hierarch that is in Naya colors. That's what I really want. And I also would love to get wild growth in modern, please. That's what I've been asking for for like forever. All right, so let's go with um, uh, Elvish Mystic. And then Halo. No, wait, 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 wait. Rubble belts. Double love struck beasts on top. I mean, that's not bad. I'll keep them. All right, I'm just committing all into this languish. I'm not, like when they're sweepers, like I'm so fed up. I don't even play around it. They're just letting these go immediately. That's just spell sweeper all over it. Wait, no sweeper? Still could be a sweeper. I didn't need to play that Love Struck Beast. I could have just waited. Here it comes. Extinction. Okay. That's not as bad as, um, you know, Languish. But Odds takes care of a lot of stuff. All right. Double Heart's Desire. All right, attack for... F How big does this guy get? 4-4? Four, four. 
Jeez, why is he so huge? I'm still attacking, but that's annoying. Shark Typhoon. Yeah, I don't like where this is going. The deuce. They're going to revolt a push. I need the Ancient Imperiosaur. If I don't top deck Ancient Imperiosaur, I think I scoop. I mean, well, that's a start, I guess. Maybe I can top deck a Galta and then they won't have an answer, but they got this guy as a 4 4 death touch. That's a crazy man land. Why are the Demir, the Demir man lands always the best yeah. ones? All right, I'm just going to scoop it up now. All right, yeah, that was like one of the worst mashups right at the start. So that's unfortunate. We really want to avoid sweeper decks because our deck is just full of, it's just totally commits to the table right out the gates. So really don't want to see sweepers. So I'm really hoping to not fight Hansa's uh, double vision deck today. <laughs> I hope he's on something else. But yeah, we should, uh, the rest of the games, like, so long as there's no sweepers, I think any game that we get should go pretty good. I think it will have an awesome time against, like, anything else that's, like, not mono sweepers. All right, well, Pioneer, a lot less active, gives us time for picking up our infinite craft from last week. That. That. Uh, it's broken. It's it's not working. Um, alrighty. I'm gonna keep this, I think. Because our rubble belt maverick can help us find lands and then that can help us convoke stuff out. We could potentially get screwed. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is not looking good. I thought I also thought it was on the draw. I don't think I would have kept this on the play. I thought I was on the draw. Black Cleave Cliffs. Another mono removal deck. At least it's not going to be mono sweepers. Okay, I would have actually just conceded there in response to that Thoughtsies, but it's too late. They already see what we got. They might take our Halo Hopper because that's like my next plan. Yep, they take our Halo Hopper, stop our early plays. If I don't hit a land off the C Note Scout, I think I'm scooping. All right, I'm scooping. So, Rakdos. The Tivar's stand is going to be here um, better here than the the get up get a leg up, but maybe scavenging ooze is going to be even better because like they're going to be killing a lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot of creatures in the grave. Scavenging ooze will have a lot to eat. I kind of like that better. I 
I think that should be pretty good. And I thought that Ancient Imperiosaur put a counter on each creature that convoked it. But it's for each creature that convoked it. Still pretty good, though. It's going to be bigger than Galta most of the time. And it's got Ward. You guys hear that? Like when, I, when I'm bouncing my knee and it's shaking my, my desk? You guys hear the little clicky noises in the mic? The making noise when I do that? Okay, another one lander. But again, I do have Rebel Belt Maverick to dig too deep to find lands, so I'm going to keep it. Okay, Halo Hopper in the grave, forest on top. And next turn we can go double one drops into Sprouting Renewal. Get five power on the table, getting close to Galta. Putting that Halo Hopper in the grave is nice for our scavenging ooze. They're doing something. They're deciding if they want to thought seize us or kill our guy. Our guy has death value, though. When he's in the graveyard, you can exile him. Um, but they chose to kill our guy anyway, so I couldn't convoke. All right, well, let's go with uh, Elvish Mystic plus C-Note Scout. And then we'll start eating these creatures from the grave. I really do not want to be thought seized. Halo Hopper. Um, do I want to put Halo Hopper in the graveyard? Um, I'm going to say... I'm gonna say no. I think I want Halo Hopper. They could also be mana screwed, maybe. I guess that's why you should never scoop early. Never know what they got. They are in the tank. Maybe they don't have a second land. They push our Elvish Mystic. I would like if people just stopped interacting with me and let me do my thing, you know? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. It's just like everybody in Pioneer wants to just do nothing but interact with your opponent's cards. It's nothing but kill everything. It's kill, kill, kill. Like the Destiny Blueberry mentality. They're also playing very slow. But I'm I'm pretty close to Galta. If, if they stop touching my stuff here, I can go Scooze into Sprouting Renewal. And then the next turn I can play Galta. I just need them to just play their own game. Do their own, play their own cards. Come on. Stop, stop touching my cards. Isn't it correct to kill everything in D2? No, no. Um, because blueberries, they have the, the kill everything mentality. Like, oh, I got to get experience. 
When in reality, oh, I can kill her thing. Oh, I got to get a creature, though. I got to get Galt out. When in reality, um, there's a lot of enemies that are optional. You really don't have to kill. That's how Blueberry is like when you're new to a game, you're pretty slow at it because you're like you have the kill everything mentality. Later on, when you're actually speed farming and you're getting stuff done, you're like, OK, I don't really need to kill those enemies to progress. Let me just skip them, run past them because killing them is a waste of time. All right, they discard just the blood crypt and only a blood crypt. So two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Galta currently costs three mana. I'm one mana short. It's one mana short. I need to top deck a land. Or um, a burning tree. So there's 22 or there's, there's 20 total no, 22 total draws. Burning Tree or any of the 18 additional lands. All right, we'll take it. I'd be totally fine if they just followed up with a, with a um, Shield Red. Actually, I wouldn't because that would... Shield Red has Death Touch for whatever reason, and so it can just trade with Galta and hold back my board. And they're shocking too. Pretty sure of the schism. That's the one that draws cards. Or makes a 1 1 token. And smug cop. But at least they're not dealing with my stuff. But that guy unfortunately has death touch, so it blocks my Galta, which is a shame. Can I please top deck a land? Nope. All right. Um, and if I attack with Scoos, they're just going to trade. Guess I just got to play some dudes. Ancient Imperiosaur is nice. Ancient Imperiosaur is pretty huge. Okay, I'm actually going to top the Imperiosaur and then put the forest after that because um, my thought process is they're going to kill it and then I'll still need a land to play Galta because they're going to kill something else as well. So I need to hit my land drop, but I know that I can at least play Imperiosaur next turn. If they kill one thing, I'll still be able to play it. And it will be massive. Mate. Man, just 2-4 Death Touch. That's just like the best blocker. Like the best early blocker in modern. In Pioneer, rather. But what, what could they have that could kill my giant creatures other than Molten Collapse in their deck? I guess they could have the Bitter Respite or whatever it's called. They could have Heartless. No, Heartless Act won't do it. Smug Cop getting in. The goblins getting in as well. We just got to take it. They know that we have to take it. So they're, they're just throwing that guy in, even though I could 
block it with my elf knight token. I just got to take it. I could block my C note scout, give more food for the scavenging ooze to eat. But I don't want to potentially mess up my plays here. And every single turn I'm living in fear of my opponent interacting with me and that's a sucky feeling. <laughs> All right, Blood Tithe Harvester. Most likely going to kill my Scoos if I don't grow it. So I think I'm going to have to put a counter on Scoos here just to make sure it's out of Blood Tithe Harvester range. So I am going to... I'm going to do that. Put a counter on Scoos. Exiling an Elvish Mystic to grow it out of Blood Tithe Harvester range. And now we can play our um, Ancient Imperiosaur. So it's swole. It's pretty swole. It's 16-16. But it can, unfortunately, trade with that Preacher. And it has trample, it has a, it has ward two. I wish it had like ward equal to its power. <laughs> so it just basically say you're not touching this because it's going to have like 16 power and then you're just. Yeah, I, that, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Bitter triumph, but it does have ward and I don't think they paid for the ward. They don't have enough mana. I think they might have screwed up. They screwed up. And then I think they also paid three life for that, right? Perfect. Please just don't have another one. Uh, putting a counter on the, the scavenging news was useless because they have the fable to clone their blood tithe and make another blood and then they can sack off to kill the scoos. So it looks like they don't have another removal spell because they didn't immediately slam it. So we should be able to get out this Galta and it should be able to attack with the Imperiosaur. You see, the annoying thing is the, the Fable cloning the Blood Tithe. And you can only activate that as a sorcery, so they can't do it on my turn. They have to do it now. But they can make another surprise 2-4 Death Touch blocker, which would be annoying. Okay, let me try to fix this infinite craft. Let me just refresh the page. That should fix it. All right, the opponent's AFK, so let's just combine fat with so many things. Fat with American Sand Sucker. Fat sand sucker, first discovery, let's go. All right, I think the opponent's back. I saw something. They're crewing up the, the smug cop. They're cloning their smug cop. They're actually trying to race. They know they can live the swing, so they're racing here. Can they live the swing, though? Yeah, I... They had a lot of math to do. They're just going for it. They're crewing up the copter. They're saving back um, the blood tithe and the preacher. They thought through this a lot, so I assume they have a plan. I assume they have a kill spell for my scoos. 
They ditch uh, Pathway. And a Cavern of Souls? I guess they're vampires. They're on Soren Vein Ripper. And I'm so upset I didn't play that before it became popular in the Pro Tour because I had that idea as soon as I saw it in the set. As soon as I saw Vein Ripper, I, I thought of Soren Imperius Bloodlord. I should have played that quicker. I just didn't think it would be as good as it was. I thought it was too cute. But it turns out it is good. Because Vein Ripper is a bomb. That is a crazy bomb. Come on, opponent, pass. You have your plan. You know what you're doing. They have one card left in hand and they're playing it. What is it? Soren, and they're going to sack off to Helix something. Sack off the Mutavault to Helix, uh, my Scoos, I think. Yeah, sack off Scoos. Sack off Mutavault, Helix the Scoos. Helix is the Scoos, yep. They can sack off the Blood Tithe to kill something. Or are they just going to save it for blocks? I would love to top that get a leg up. Get a leg up would just win. But isn't this game too? Didn't I side in Tivar's stand or whatever? Oh no, I sided in the Scoozes. Yep, they're killing off the C-Note Scout. So, um, they're dead. I think they're dead. They're, I just swing all and they lose. Play Galta. Let's exile this Rebel Belt Maverick and put a counter on our other Rebel Belt Maverick. Go to combat, attack everything, and I think that's it. Opponent took a million years in that turn and did all of that math and all of that thinking just to just die on the backswing. <laughs> My dude tramples, right? Yeah, he does. If I just found out right now he doesn't trample, I would have been really upset. <laughs> Yep, got there. Okay. Um, I think Scooze is still the play. Because a lot of the time, and especially on the draw, I don't think I'd really have the time to hold up Tivar's last stand. Opponent just scoops it up? Are you kidding me? Just wasting our time. Hey, they, they rage quit. We count those. We count those. What's up, Atheist? Atheist, um, the, uh, the, the exclamation point deck is not working right now. Can't figure out why, because MTG bot is in the channel. So I have no idea what's going on, but um, I will get you the list in a second. Let me just, let me just keep this. You know what, I have, I have the paste here. Let me just paste. There, there's the paste. Um, somebody followed mansplained. Thank you so much for the follow. Sparble, dude, we're fighting all these meta decks. Just today is just nothing but meta. It's all meta. Don't kill my Elvish Mystic, dude. I, what did I do to deserve this? Go up against Rakdos, followed by Is It after fighting Mono Sweepers Control. Like this is probably some of the worst luck I've had <laughs> in terms of like matches I got in a, in a day of Pioneer, three in a row like this. Crazy. I just want to catch a break. Please let me go up against something fair. I mean, I mean, this is fair. I mean. I mean, like something chill, not something like super sweaty and just kills everything and interacts with everything I play and everything I do. I just want a deck that keeps their hands to themselves so I can just play my dang deck. All right, so I can kill their Ledger Shredder with my get a leg up here. But if I top deck a land, I'm going to want to play my thing. I didn't. All right, so let's just attack. And then we'll get a leg up to kill the Ledger Shredder.
a lot of people play Phoenix. Yeah, it's like. I guess it's not as bad as modern where like there's a lot more meta slaves in modern pioneer, I would say is. Uh, a little bit more chill decks sometimes, but like. Also, there's a lot of broken stuff you run into in, in Pioneer. The tier one decks, like any of the tier one decks, and then there's like Grease Fang. Boros Convoke can also be kind of hard to fight sometimes with most things when they get the ridiculous start, like turn to 15 power and whatnot. They got their phoenixes. All right, if I don't draw my land right now, I think we lost. I need to be able to race here. Okay, I got my land. I can start throwing out these love struck beasts. We may have a chance to race. I just need them to not have temporal manipulation, and I need to. I need them to not have another attacker because I'll die in three swings at this pace. And I think we can race. Young Pyro is going to give them tons of chum blockers. But why are they running Young Pyro and not the third path Iconoclast? Isn't the third path better? I guess their decks are nothing but instants and sorceries anyways. Rebel Belt Maverick. All right, go to combat, attack with everything. Lightning Axe. All right, that's going to be enough for me. Let's go on to game number two here. And I'm going to have to bring in my Damping Spheres. And Scoos is also not that bad because we can eat the Phoenixes out of the grave. And we're going to cut the get a leg ups. And what else are we cutting? I guess it's going to be one of our one drops. Damping Sphere could also screw us. Okay, we got the Damping Sphere, I'll keep it. We're a little bit of a ways away from Ancient Imperiosaur. Hopefully I draw like a Love Struck Beast so I can get multiple bodies to help convoke it. And they're not actually killing off my turn one elf. It's a miracle. All right, deck, don't bait me with something I'm going to want to play over Damping Sphere. <laughs> okay, thank you. There's no shot that kept in um, Spell Pierce. There's no way. So let's just play it. Okay, now it's fair magic v fair magic. We're going to consider. So this should slow them down quite a bit. But also I'm lacking aggression. I need to draw. Scavenging ooze, preferably. All right, is it young PZ time? Not yet. I've been watching on YouTube since before 10K. Oh, nice. It's been years then. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. Thank you for stopping by the Twitch channel. You're welcome back anytime.
We're here every single Saturday. Pieces of the Puzzle. I'm very close to this Ancient Imperius sword. I just need one more turn. Oh my goodness, I'm getting flooded. I'm getting flooded. But next turn, I get Imperiosaur. I just need my opponent to not sweep my board or kill anything. I doubt they will. I think they're just going to keep casting spells. Shock and Phoenix. Crackling Drake. Yep. Okay, so I can play my Imperious Sword as a 10 10. It's pretty nice. Ancient Imperious Sword is surprisingly easy to cast. I feel like this guy could see play in more decks. Oh, wait. He enters with. Oh, that's so stupid. Oh, that's so lame. It made me actually like pay a mana with this guy instead of convoking him. I meant to convoke. That's so dumb. <laughs> I gotta be careful with that. He's supposed to be a 10-10, and I think that could potentially cost me the game. Since they're at 11 and every bit of damage here looks like it matters for this next turn. I could have actually threatened lethal. Unfortunate. But there's no way they're killing this. I wouldn't mind a Galta. Or more Imperiosaurs would be nice. They're in the tank. This Damping Sphere is putting in all the work. There was a modern combo deck trying to abuse the Imperiosaur when it first came out. Yeah, it was the... Um, wasn't it the Allosaurus Rider deck or something like that? I forget. But uh, you could also make some kind of thud combo. Atheist, thank you so much for the follow. You can make some kind of Imperiosaur thud combo where you just power it out and like turn two or three and thud it. You're going to Fiery Impulse, my guy. If they unholy heat here, I was about to say I was going to be salty. This is the misclick would have got him killed for no reason. What's up, 12 hugs? Wait, that's not working either? Dude, MTG bot is like bugging today. It's not working. My commands aren't working. Yeah, nothing's working. Brotherhood Zen to deal with all artifacts. That also kills my frog. But I do got lethal on the table and there's nothing they can do about it. But knowing they have Brotherhood's End really sucks because we know that we're just... We know that we're just going to get our entire stuff swept next game when we convoke out a million guys early on. Already moving on to the board, submitting it right back as is. Tranquil Frillback can exile the graveyard, but Scooz is enough. Can this protect a permanent or just a creature? Ah, uh, didn't get to see. I'm going to need that Damping Sphere again. Hopefully I get it here in the opener. And I got it in the opener. Unfortunately, my creature suite is kind of lacking. But I think I'm going to keep this. Just because of the Damping Sphere.
Oh my goodness, don't get me flooded again. No. It's only 20 lands in this deck. Dude, there's no way. There's only 20 lands in here. It's the same amount as burn. That's crazy. I guess we're working our way up to an Imperiosaur again. They missed their land drop. That's great. There's a Galta. So if I can keep hitting a steady stream of creatures here, I could potentially get out Galta. Look at that. Two fours at the top. You can't be serious. Like 20 land deck, by the way. <laughs> like when we already seen eight lands. There's like, like, scientifically, there's like no chance we find lands for the next 10 turns. Okay, Imperiosaur, I'm two turns away from that. Consider, it's all they can play this turn. Did they find their land drop? They did not. They kept it on top, right? Probably Brotherhood's End. Please give me a playable creature. I don't care what it is. Just give me something cheap. That's not something cheap. Okay, one turn away from Imperiosaur, and that will allow me to play Galta. Just please, nothing happen right now. Please, nothing, nothing crazy happen. Don't, don't kill my creature. Don't hold up a counter spell. They don't even have counter spells. Any attacks? No attacks. There's why are they staying back? Because I feel like they have no reason to stay back right now. Alrighty. Um Imperious or time. As an 8-8. Eight, eight. They really have a mana leak. Aether Gust. Alright, I'll top that. They found their land just in the nick of time there. That sucks. No, can't do the can't do the elf first because then damping sphere will make us unable to play our Imperiosaur. Opponents uh, tanking a lot here. We have some time probably to play Infinite Craft. Never mind, I phone up the Ledger Shredder. And there's no one mana card in Pioneer that is going to be able to counter um, my thing here. Lofty Denial, does that... Lofty Denial cause one, right? If you have a flying creature, it makes it cause one. No, I believe it costs three and it makes it cost two. Okay, got my Ancient Imperial Sword. That means I can play Galta next turn. Need them to not kill or bounce Imperiosaur. Got Ward. And they got like almost nothing but damage based removal. Aether Gust can tuck a permanent, right? No, choose target spell. Oh, yeah, or permanent. All right, opt means they won't be able to. Do they find the land though? See, they're getting they're getting screwed. I'm getting flooded. It's fair. And the, the rule of Magic the Gathering is screw always beats flood. Yeah, so it looks like Galta's coming out, but the question is, are they going to counter it?
Dude, they're not gonna block. Why aren't they just attacking? Can I afford to play Halo Hopper first? I believe so. Then Galta is gonna cost two, three. Yeah, okay. We can do this first. I couldn't afford to play Elf first, though. I guess I helped them there by doing that. Maybe I should have just played Galta and just called it with that. They're taking it down to 12. Hey, down to 12. They would need a boomerang. Yeah, I already read that. Okay. Tapped Spire Bluff Canal. I think that really hurt them. I think they really wanted that to be untapped. Dabbing Sphere once again putting in the finest of work. Brotherhood's End Time. Lightning Axe. Uh, that doesn't kill it. What's their plan here? Yeah, they scoop it up because of the ward. They really they wanted to double up to kill that, but we actually got there. Damping Sphere hard carrying us to victory against Is It Phoenix. Please, please, I'm begging you, no more tier one matchups. Please, no more tier one matchups. I just want to fight something chill. Okay, it's Hanza. Please don't be on the. Please don't be on double vision. I said it earlier. I said it earlier. I was like, I really don't want to fight Hanza's double vision deck today because it's going to be mono sweepers. And our deck is something that just insta loses to a single sweeper. So please don't be, don't be it. Chaopulent Palace, thank goodness. Why not, uh, why not Zagoth Trial? Okay, there's another, okay, it's just Mono Trilands. Thoughtseize, oh, dang it. Probably gonna take my love struck or maybe Galta. You know, take Galta. Okay, let's go with Art's Desire. Rebel Belt Maverick. Put that in the graveyard. Burning Tree Emissary to the top, I guess. And play Halo Hopper. Next turn's gonna be a great turn. Burning Tree into Love Struck into Sprouting Renewal. Gonna go super wide, but I really hope Hans is not doing Mono Sweepers again. Burning Tree into Love Struck into Sprouting Renewal. And attack for five. I know Hanzo likes his uh, likes his control decks. Please just don't be another control deck. Please just don't be. Oh wait, wait, is that Glass Pool Shore? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not control. I think that's a Glass Pool Shore. It is. Oh wait, Drana. Wait, maybe it maybe it is control. Never mind. I saw Glass Pool Shore and I was hopeful it was a creature deck. But thought sees and drown in the lock. Yeah, it's control. Can I get something gigantic now? Rubble Belt, Maverick. All right, go to combat, swing everything. Maverick. And Rubble Belt, Maverick, and Elvish Mystic. Let's just put those in the graveyard. And then exile Rebel Belt Maverick to put a counter on our um, human token.
All right. Sweeper bust. And they don't have it. Nice. Moving on to the board against Soltai Control. That potentially has creatures because of Glass Pool Shore. Scoos, once again, um, get up is too risky to go for against a deck with removal spells. So I think I'm just going to bring in Scoos to eat up the stuff they kill because they are going to kill things. But maybe I actually do Tivers stand. But again, on the draw, I don't like it as much. It's, I think it's better on the play to hold up protection spells because on the draw, you're a, you're a turn behind. You got to start playing things. On the play, though, being a turn ahead, then you have the leeway to hold it up. Let's keep this. We can get out Ancient Imperiosaur fairly quick here, so long as we're not interacted with. All right, Forest Elf. Wait, I thought I had two lands. I swear I thought I saw two lands in my hand. I guess my eyes were deceiving me. I thought I had two. So now I think we lost if we get this Elf killed. Yikes. Don't kill it. Thoughts he's me. Thoughts, thank you. I swear, like in my, in my brain, I thought I had two lands. I would not have kept it. They take Ancient Imperiosaur. Halo Hopper. All right, let's Burning Tree. into um, Heart's Desire, into Halo Hopper. Okay, so three, four, five, six, seven Galta currently costs five. Got to get a little more power on the table. If I can get down Lustruck Beast, that'll be enough. Elvish Mystic. I would like to play that, but I also would like to play Scooze. Because it makes better use of the mana. Um, hmm. Probably wrong, but I'll play Scooze. Okay, so Galta now costs three. If I top that Galan, I can play it. Sweeper, yeah, they're shocking, and then Languish. And I'm gonna insta scoop. Oh, wait, 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 they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. Uh, Galta, do it now before they do anything. I could have actually played Lanamore Elf first, but who cares? I got the Galta on the table, that's all I wanted. I did it so fast, I didn't even think. So now Crux of Fate is the only thing that can do it. Otherwise, they're not going to deal with Galta. The end. Oh, they're on their mono extraction deck. I forgot about this. They played this deck against us um, a couple months ago. They didn't deal with Galta, so I assume that means they have another. Oh, they don't have another answer. Heck yeah. So it wasn't a sweeper deck. It was a mono the end extraction deck. I remember that. It's always scary playing against Hanzo. You never know what you're going to see. But that's what I enjoy, you know, being able to play against brewers. Because it's so stale fighting against meta, it's nice to fight against brewers. So we are now three and one. Sea Biscuit redeemed draw land as the game is over. All right, well, let's continue our infinite craft here. We're combining fat with everything. We got fat sand sucker, and let's compare that. Let's pair that with bear. Fat bear sucker? Nope. Fat bear? Butter. Butter and fat. Butter. Butter and cobbler. Pie. Fat pie. Obesity. Obesity bear. 
Polar bear. Fat polar bear. White bear. Fat white bear. Okay, polar bear and ice cream. Ice bear. Fat bear? I'm trying to make fat bear. Sumo polar bear. Butterfly polar bear. Bumblebee. Fat bumblebee, queen bee? Nope. American sand sucker and bumblebee. Bumblebee. Bear bumblebee. Bee bear. I thought I was gonna make like honey. What the heck? Bumblebee and bear is not honey? Okay, bee bear. Okay, please make fat bear. Hun There's honey. All right, honey and America. Money. Fat money. Rich. <laughs> Uh, fat rich, prince, fat prince, sumo, fat sumo, wrestler, bear wrestler, WWE, fat WWE. Oh, I thought it was gonna give me like Umaga or something. Okay, I have to, I have to, I have to pair WWE with everything. Get a bunch of wrestlers. All right, so Los Angeles WWE, John Cena. Let's go with obesity John Cena. <laughs> the Rock. Okay, The Rock and Butter. Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, fat. The Rock, The Rock Bear. The Reckoning. Butterfly Reckoning. Fat Reckoning. Ice Cream, The Reckoning. Ice Cream Cake. Zombie ice cream cake. Zombie cake. <laughs> okay, we got a game here against um an anti anti cyber cyberlick. Cyberlick. And we're gonna be on the draw here. Yo, look at this hand. Oh my goodness, that's triple birdie tree into sprouting renewal on the next turn Galta. I'm in. Let's do it. Yes, a forest. Nothing that's going to kill every single thing I play. Let's go and get a leg up. That's going to ensure that I can get out Galta. I just need a th I just need a third land and I can play Galta. I don't no, I didn't want to see blue. Please, no more blue. Blue so boring to fight. All right, burning tree. That the the elvish mystic is enough for Galta. We can do it. We can do that. All right, so burning tree into a burning tree into burning tree into elvish mystic into sprouting renewal. So I think the opponent is on um, lotus field combo. Okay, next turn, Galta. Impulse, exactly what I expected. What's up, Hansa? DG, deck totally betrayed me in those draw. Yeah, uh, like, did you have any sweepers, by the way? Or were you still on your, it was just, it was your mono extraction deck, right? You needed Crux of Fate. You didn't draw the Crux of Fate. Uh, Sylvan Scrying? Nope, Lotus Field. So they're just gonna untap it here with the Vision, the, the, the two drop cycle guy or whatever. Vizier. Or are they just going to Sylvan's Crying for the Nykthos? Vizier. Okay, there's a chance we could potentially lose next turn. I doubt it, though. But the thing is, I'm not going to kill the next turn, so they'll have an additional turn. And then I'll, I'll be screwed. Arcturus Charm is going to put the Nykthos directly into play. Okay, so yeah, I think they do win. They do win, because Archimage is... Arc Druid's charm is a thing that exists now. So I think we lost. Um, 
two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's enough. The Llanowar Elves into Galta. But I think they potentially, yeah, they win here if they had hidden strings. No sweepers, mono extraction. It was a deck that steals stuff with the blue. Yeah, the agent of treachery cheated into play. Couldn't find pieces to make it happen. Agent of treachery combos are really cool to see, like why Noda stuff and like other decks that cheat them in somehow. It's always fun. F6 time. Okay, you know what? While our opponent is potentially comboing here, I think it's time to pull up some infinite craft and keep on combining WWE with stuff. All right, I F6. They do have the hidden strings, what I wanted to avoid. I'm gonna make this as short as possible. Okay, zombie cake in America. Zombie America. Butter. No, that's just gonna make obesity. Let's go with. Um, Time travel, zombie America. Lava, zombie America. Hawaii. Are you implying that everyone in Hawaii is a zombie? Can anybody in Hawaii confirm? Hawaii WWE. Hulk Hogan. Does Hulk Hogan wear Hawaiian shirts? I think he does. Hulk Hogan and plant. Hulkamania. Uh, all right. Hulkamania and Ghost. Hulk Hogan and Ash. Smoke. WWE and Smoke. Undertaker. Yes. Undertaker and Flower. Corpse Flower. Yo, that's sick. Okay. Um, Corpse Flower and Lake. Swamp. Swamp love, romance, WDV and romance, wrestling. <laughs> okay. Wrestling and uh, where, where's Bear? Where's Bear? Hi, wrestling. Pie fight. WDV. John Cena and pie fight. Turkey pie fight. Thanksgiving. WWE Thanksgiving. Boston Tea Party. Fourth of July, the best holiday. My favorite holiday. American Sandsucker with John Cena. Turkey John Cena. It's finally my turn. It's finally my turn. Let's go. So we just um, play this and we attack with everything and we get a leg up and, and kill them if they somehow. Okay, they didn't get their fey of wishes. Sideboard time. I know what I'm slamming in. Give me these damping spheres. Give me this besage you so I can try to hit Nykthos. I should just always side in the Besaju and cut a forest because there's no reason why this shouldn't be main deck. I don't know why I haven't been doing that all day. Um, all right, so. Yeah, just damping spheres uh, and we'll cut. What do I cut here? Let's cut Sprouting Renewal. I kind of like get a leg up because they're not going to do anything about it and they could potentially just win us the game out of nowhere. Hey, damping sphere. We're getting really lucky with getting these damping spheres in the opener. I will absolutely snap keep this.
Our player Rebel Belt Maverick. Do a little bit of surveilling. Uh, Sino Scout to the grave and Burning Tree on top. This is a good looking hand. You know, maybe I should have actually went Heart's Desire since on the third turn. I'm going to play Love Struck Beast regardless. I could have had more value saving this back for later. All right, so now let's Burning Tree, Burning Tree into Damping Sphere. But maybe I should wait a second. Nah, I, I was going to wait a second because um, now they know to just besage you it immediately. I mean, it makes best use of the mana. I'm still going to do it. Seiju? Nope. But now they can Sylvan Scrying for Beseju. Sylvan Scrying, definitely going to give Beseju. Yep. All right, just play Love Struck Beast. And attack for five. Okay, two mana, Lotus Field time. And they can now besage you, my Damping Sphere. All right, get a forest. That's why I should have saved it. They had that backup Sylvan Scrying regardless. Getting a little bit flooded here. I can still two-shot them, though. Land or else of the graveyard, forest of the graveyard. I've been getting flooded a lot today, like despite it only being a 20-land deck. Getting there for a bunch, put lethal on the table, so they have to win here. But it's Lotus combo, anything could happen. I think let's just play some infinite craft now, since this is probably going to be a long turn. All right, John Cena, Cobbler, Shoein, WWE Shoein, Wrestling, Honeymoon Wrestling, Honey Boo Boo, uh, Kim Kardashian, Honey Boo Boo, it's going to be Kanye, yep, Kanye, WWE, um, Wizard Kanye, Yeezus, Yeezus. Megalopolis Kanye. Kanye Westopolis. <laughs> and baby. Northwest. Um, Northwest Snow White. Nosedive? What? WWE Nosedive. The best move in all of wrestling. Mushroom Nosedive. Shroom. Hey, we got Shroom. Let's go. Now we just have to somehow make the real Shroom. How can we make the real? All right, Flower Shroom. Mushroom. Snow Shroom. Snowman. Snowman and dust. Snow. Snowflake. What happened to my... What? What just happened? Oh, Path of Peril. Yikes. And now they got an arboreal grazer. I got to get a one power guy. Give me an elf. Give me an elf. Yes, I got the elf. All right, play Elf. Let's exile these Rebel Belt Mavericks. Attack, they chump. And they have another turn to win here, but they only got two cards in hand. Three cards now. 
They can make a second Lotus Field. They may be fizzling, perhaps. Just add lava. Lava to what? Balaget Recovery. What do they get back with Balaget Recovery? Pin strings. All right, what are we adding lava to? If I combine lava with everything, it's just going to make volcanoes. WWE and lava is volcano, snowflake, snowman and lava, obsidian. Stone cold, let's go. Stone cold lava. Steve Austin, Kanye Austin, Jesus. I definitely want to make uh, combine stone cold with things. Or Steve Austin. Steve Austin nosedive. Gonna make nose Austin. Nosedive lava. Stone cold volcano. Undertaker and Stone Cold. WrestleMania. WrestleMania, baby. And they scoop it up and we got there taking down Lotusville combo. Dude, we're fighting nothing but tier one today. Jeez. We cannot catch a break. Oh, that was it. That was the last game. And we ended up four and one. Dude, a $20 deck. A $20 deck. Take a $20 brew from the small Japanese tournament. Taking down a lot of tier one decks today. That's crazy. So I think um, the only um, we fought three tier one decks and then we fought the uh, um, Hans's extract tribal and then we fought the Demir control in game one. So the other three decks were all like tier one, but then that one was like kind of like an offspring of tier one, the, the Demir control deck, kind of like a cousin of tier one. I just pull up this uh, card preview here. So it worked out pretty well, despite getting um, flooded a lot today. But I think that a couple of those games, like uh, against Is It and then against Lotus Field, were won off of the back of a Damping Sphere and only a Damping Sphere. <laughs> so Damping Sphere, uh, once again, proving to be a very, very useful sideboard card. That's why most sideboards I, I use have like three copies of Damping Sphere. They're just so dang good. And uh, they can just win games. And um, the deck did pretty, pretty well. I, I greatly enjoyed it. I just think the mana base could use more tech. Like Lair of the Hydra, perhaps. Hash Up Oasis. Um, Presage You. Uh, stuff like that. Maybe it doesn't... Like, maybe you're never going to crack a Hash Up Oasis. Maybe you're never going to use Lair of the Hydra. Maybe it's just going to enter tapped and screw you over. Um, but the option, I think, is pretty good. But this is just proof that you don't really need that and you can be on a budget. And if you actually cut, I, I, I imagine the most expensive card in the 75 is that Singleton Beseju in the board. So if you cut that, the deck is probably way cheaper. How much is Beseju? Like how much does it cost? Like money wise. Because if it's like 10 bucks, if it's like 40 bucks, then this deck could be dirt cheap. Everything else here is really cheap. Burning Tree is probably like $2, about $2 a piece because they're like, Actually, no, they got reprinted. They're probably like 20 cents. Um, Imperiosaur, Galta, pretty cheap, I'd imagine. Galta's probably like a dollar. Imperiosaur's probably like a dollar. Everything else is penny cards. 40 to 50 for Bisatio. Dang. So yeah, pretty cheap deck. And uh, it took down meta. So there you go. Everybody watching this video on YouTube, if you made it to this point, you have to pick up this deck and try it. It was really cool to see Convoke done in a different color rather than Boros. And I think that that was awesome. I really like Halo Hopper. I played it in Affinity when it first came out, but I think it could be pretty cool in just the typical um, Gleeful Demolition Convoke deck. I think it could be cool in there. Tap those three goblins you make and just instantly play this guy. I think that could be pretty fun. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Um, for those watching on Twitch, stay tuned so we can raid somebody. 
For those watching the YouTube video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment because your interaction really, really helps out a ton. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We do Modern every Monday and Pioneer every Friday. So that's the kind of thing. I hope you stick around for more. If you want to catch the gameplay live on Twitch, we do our streams every single Saturday afternoon. Hope to see you there. Twitch link down below. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.